So time to talk about China. <laughs> There's been a lot of renewed interest in the comment section I see. A lot of people asking me, Adam, can you talk about China? What's happening to the Chinese economy, Chinese stock market? And I think there's been a lot of renewed interest because for some reason, a lot of YouTubers, I don't know if it's a conspiracy, but they've been releasing a lot of videos on the impending Chinese economy collapse. It's the end. So let's talk about it. Is it really that serious? Uh, is it really that scary? Well, let's look at the facts, right? Now, at the same time, of course, what's happening to Chinese stocks? If you have been holding Chinese stocks, I've been still holding my Chinese stocks like Alibaba, Tencent, for a couple of years and the last two years yeah can seem really frustrating because like the chinese stocks are going nowhere you thought it's going up it comes down again goes sideways so what the fuck is going on right and well let me just begin by saying that uh, am i concerned about the chinese stocks being delisted from the u.s stock market no uh, am i concerned that these chinese companies be taken over by the ccp no Am I concerned that these uh, Chinese stocks are going to go bankrupt and go to zero? No. I'm 100% confident that these Chinese companies I'm invested in are great companies. I'm going to show you the, the facts again. The only thing that's frustrating is that it's taking a lot longer than you expect for these stock prices to rebound because of a lot of the macro and geopolitical issues. So I know that like Tencent, Alibaba, these companies are still great. They're still solid. They will rebound, but it takes longer than expected. So I expected a year, right? But now it's been like almost two years. And yeah, it could take three, four, five years. I don't know. But that's the bottom line. Well, the good thing is that when you understand how to use options, you don't just have to st suck your thumb and watch the prices go nowhere for a couple of years, right? So what I've been doing, I've shared many times, is that I've been using uh, put options to short the Chinese stocks on my trading account, right? So on one hand, my investment account, yes, I'm back holding these Chinese companies going nowhere, but on my trading account, I'm shorting them and generating some short-term profits to make myself feel better, right? And of course, you use the profits to, you know, possibly add even more shares when I see a sustained reversal in the trend of these Chinese stocks. But let's take a closer look in this video. So let's begin by looking at the Hang Seng Index. So the majority of the Chinese companies like Alibaba, Tencent, Ping An Insurance, China Construction Bank, they actually listed on the Hang Seng Index. So this represents the overall main uh, Chinese market. All right? Of course, you've got the mainland, Shanghai, Shenzhen, but again, most of the companies that we own will be on the Hang Seng Index, so let's take a look at it. So from a technical perspective, you can see that uh, all this started uh, in early 2021. That's when this current bear market started. So currently, the Chinese stock market is still in a bear market. It's been a bear market now for uh, a year and a half, right? So you know that typically bear markets last can last anywhere from a year and a half to two years historically. So the good news is that this bear market is nearer the end than the beginning, right? So when will the Chinese bear market end? I can't tell you that. I don't have a crystal ball, but it will end eventually and again we're closer to the end than to the beginning so as long as the you can see the 50 moving average below the 150 moving average sloping down price below the 200 moving average sloping down so it's a clear downtrend bear market and you can see that there were some attempts for the market to reverse um, in a in fact a couple of weeks ago you can see there was a bit of a short-term uptrend reversal here where we had slightly higher highs and higher lows, the 20 EMA crossing above the 40 EMA that signal a short-term uptrend, but it failed, right? And the short-term uptrend has now reversed back to a short-term downtrend, okay? But that, those are the short-term trends, but overall, the larger trend is still going down. So we will only have a sustainable bull market in Chinese stocks when, when that 50 moving average, that blue line, crosses back above that 150 moving average and it starts sloping up or when the price goes above the 200 moving average and that starts sloping up again no one can predict when it's going to happen but that's what i'm watching on the technical charts 
to know when it's a confirmed bull market. And that's when one could possibly, you know, get more aggressive adding new positions. But for now, bear market, I'm not adding any more positions. So what has been driving this bear market? There's a whole bunch of reasons. Now, all this started, of course, in late 2020, uh, when the Chinese government decided to uh, crack down on the technology companies, right? Alibaba is the first one that got whacked, right? So the tech crackdown, that is the first thing that got started. And the second thing was their crackdown on property companies that were over leveraged. They wanted to burst the bubble before the bubble actually burst and they get another uh, financial crisis like the US. So they wanted to avoid that. So they say, let's burst our own bubble, <laughs> right? Great idea. So we had the uh, property crackdown, the three red lines that actually cause this current property crisis, which people are saying is gonna you know, crash all the banks and drag down the economy. It won't, right? And later at the end of the video, I'll revisit this and I'll talk about why, right? You know, the biggest joke is a lot of these doomsday prophets talking about the collapse of China. These people, number one, I doubt they even visit China. I doubt they have got relatives in China. I doubt they actually know people who work in Chinese corporations, right? So I've got the good fortune of having family in China. I don't visit China that often, but I've got good friends who are sitting on the boards of listed companies and sitting on the boards of Chinese banks. So I've got a lot of, uh, let's say, information that a lot of people don't have. And I can tell you that, you know, things are bad. I'm not saying they are good, but they are not as bad as what a lot of these YouTubers make it out to be. Again, I'll revisit this at the end of this video, but for now, let's list down all these macro issues. So the tech crackdown, the property crackdown that's causing the current uh, property crisis. And then of course you have got the crazy, stupid zero COVID policy uh, that the Chinese government has enacted. Uh, and of course, this property crisis plus a zero COVID problem um, is what's causing the economic slowdown in China. That may very well lead to a recession. All right. Now, remember that the market tends to uh, be a leading indicator of the economy, right? The market uh, moves in expectation. So in a way, this bear market already kind of like prices in a severe downturn and recession. So... Uh, I won't be surprised if the economic numbers do come in uh, to reflect a real recession in the Chinese economy, right? So besides that, a lot of other issues, you have got, of course, this conflict between the US and China, and that's creating all kinds of tensions. Uh, and of course, the big question is, will China attempt to take Taiwan? And of course, China's support of the Russian uh, war in Ukraine, all this is creating a lot of negative sentiment towards China, causing a lot of big fund managers to dump Chinese stocks, getting out of China. Of course, all this contributing to this whole um, negative macro geopolitical issue in China. And of course, last on the list would be, of course, the delisting issue of Chinese stocks being delisted from US markets. So all this combined is what's creating this really negative sentiment in Chinese stocks in the Chinese market. Now, will all these problems last forever? If you think so, then get out of China, sell and never look back and don't even buy, right? Why waste your time? But if you believe that all this is temporary, that it will end, nothing lasts forever in this cold November rain, then a lot of money can be made buying good Chinese companies that are now selling at huge discounts or simply buying the Chinese index ETF like KWeb that could easily double or triple uh, when the market reverses into a new bull market. Now, you guys know that I'm a cockeyed optimist, right? So I believe that whether it's the Chinese market or the US market, you know, nothing bad lasts forever. Every recession will end, every crisis will end, every bear market will end, and what follows is always the next bull market. So because of that, I continue to hold on to my Chinese index ETFs, and I continue to hold on to the Chinese companies that I own. Now, again, for those of you like me who already own Chinese companies, and the question you ask is, you know, should, should I sell or should I hold on or should I buy more? So the first question to ask is, did you enter it as a trade or an investment? So if you are a trader, you should have gotten out years ago, right? Once you hit the stop loss, get out, move on to the next trade. But if you enter some of these Chinese companies as an investment, then ask yourself this question, is the investment thesis still intact? Is it still an underlying great company? Because if you find that the company itself is still great, 
then the temporary drop in the share price is caused by macro factors, then that's temporary, right? Because once the macro factors change, once sentiment shifts and the economy rebounds, then these good Chinese companies you own are going to double and triple in value. So it all depends on those companies you own. Are they still good companies? So I'm going to give you a few examples. So the two main companies I own are Tencent and Alibaba. Now, despite the economic slowdown, despite all the regulations that were whacked on these companies, guess what? They are still growing. They are still making money. So if you ask me, the underlying business is still solid, right? So now I'm not adding more shares. I've been holding it and Chinese stocks make up about 8% of my overall portfolio. But these are companies that I know will grow. Will, they are growing in fact, but they will rebound once the overall macro environment improves. So let's take a closer look at Tencent and Alibaba and let's look at the underlying business. So the first company I own is Tencent. Now again, why did I buy Tencent in the first place? Because Tencent uh, dominates social media in China. So you guys know that in China, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, WhatsApp are all banned in China, right? So in China, they all use Tencent's WeChat and QQ. So essentially, Tencent, uh, they own all the social media companies. So uh, they have got 1.27 billion monthly active users. So Tencent is kind of like Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, Twitter, all rolled into one, right? Now, besides that, Tencent is also the world's largest game developer. So besides people chatting online, they sell advertisements, they also uh, provide them all these games to play, okay? Uh, they also monetize through online advertising and they've got a fintech and business services segment where they've got Tencent Cloud. So they do provide cloud computing services like Amazon, Microsoft and Alphabet, which they compete with. And they also have got Tencent Meeting, which is kind of like the China's version of Zoom and Microsoft Teams and Tencent Docs, which is China's version of Google Docs. So in other words, Tencent is kind of like the again, like the Microsoft slash Facebook slash Instagram slash WhatsApp slash Twitter slash PayPal all rolled into one in China. And so as you guys know, I only like to buy companies that have got no competition or little competition and they dominate with a wide economic mode. So that's the reason I bought Tencent because they are number one in their niche segment. They are number one in terms of long form videos, which is kind of like their version of YouTube. Uh, they are number one in new services by monthly active users, number one in um, games in, in China and the rest of the world, number one in social media, number one in a lot of all this stuff, right? So, but again, holding this stock has been frustrating in the last two years. Well, if you take a look at, for example, the last six years, right, from 2016 to mid-2022, 20, uh, you can see that because of the Chinese crackdown of technology companies, we had this huge crash in the last one and a half years that wiped out a lot of the market value of the company. Now, even with this big crash, you can see that uh, since 2016, uh, the market or the stock has been up 112%, which really, really sucks, okay? Uh, that gives us a compounded annual growth rate of 11% a year, which really, really sucks, okay? Because of all this, uh, this massive crackdown over here. But if you look at the underlying company, all right, let's look at the underlying business itself. So again, this is 2016 to the end of 2021 because their financial year ends in uh, December. So because of that, 2022, the financial year is not... Close, so we're going to look at the closed financial years, right? Now, in 2016, what was their revenue? Their revenue was 134 uh, billion yen, all right? By the end of 2021, it was 552 billion yen. So in other words, their revenue has increased 268% or about 3.6x in the last six years. So revenue has grown and you can see that Again, despite the Chinese economy slowing down, despite all the regulations, their revenue has increased, right? Their revenue has been increasing every single year, right? Except, of course, the last 12 months that are not uh, capturing an entire fiscal year, but it's just a bit of a slowdown, 
okay? Not a crash. Their operating income from 50 billion yen to 123 billion yen, up 143%. Their net income from 41 billion to 224 billion, 447% increase in their net profits over six years. That's about 5.4x. So is that a lousy company? No, I think it's a great business, right? Earnings per share up 438%, giving a compounded annual growth rate of 32% a year in terms of their earnings growth. So think about it. The company's profits are growing at 32% a year for the last six years, but the stock price only grew at 11%, right? So we know that in the long run, the stock price will always reflect the fundamentals of the actual business. But in the short term, it is not reflecting the business fundamentals because of the macro reasons, the political reasons that are ca causing this bloody crash. Now, this will end. So once the sentiment shifts, once the regulations are over, you can expect it's going to rebound back to where it should be. Now, when that's going to happen, I don't know, right? You're going to be patient, right? But my intrinsic value for Tencent, very conservatively, very conservatively, is at least between 600 to 696 Hong Kong dollars. That is my intrinsic valuation range. Uh, again, being very, very conservative. So over time, as they continue to grow and the valuation increases, again, this company should e easily be able to double or triple from these levels. But again, uh, macro sentiment has to change for that to happen, all right? In terms of cash flow, their cash flow has increased from 65 billion to 175 billion in six years. That's a compounded growth rate of 17.81%, which is a pretty good business. By the way, this source is from Capital IQ. Let me credit the source. And the next source is from Guru Focus. You can see again, uh, the underlying business of Tencent, that's the revenue growth. And again, despite the regulations, despite the crackdowns, revenue is still growing. The underlying business is a solid company. So if I own this company, I've got no worries, man. No worries, okay? The share price dropping temporarily by 50, 60%, doesn't matter, right? It will rebound, okay? Uh, one sentiment shifts. And again, you can see the net profit on an annual basis growing very, very strongly, despite all the slowdowns. Operating cash flow, which is in yellow, and free cash flow again increasing consistently. So, when as an investor, I always look at the underlying business to tell myself whether I made a good investment, regardless of the short term share price performance. Now, in the short term, some investors are concerned that hey, their revenue has stopped growing, their profits are dropping, oh my god, we're gonna die. Chill out, it's just a short term quarterly result, okay? that is because of short-term issues that will be resolved in time. So if you take a look at their latest quarterly results, you can see that their revenue, um, second quarter 2022 versus last year, second quarter has dropped 3%. Oh my God, the company's gonna die. <laughs> chill out, chill out, chill out, right? Uh, now, where was the drop from? You can see online advertising dropped 18%, okay? Uh, their social networks yeah, up slightly. So the main drop was from their online advertising. So very similar to the US, where you got a slowdown in advertising revenue from Google, from Facebook, from Snapchat. China's facing the same issue because of their economic slowdown of companies wanting to advertise, right? So is this temporary or permanent? To me, it's again temporary because of the business cycle, right? So no big deal. Uh, FinTech and business services still growing, but again, um, very flat, right? So social media, flat. So it's this one that's dragging down their short-term sales and profits. But even then, take a look. On a quarterly basis, uh, their sales moderated slightly, right? And their profits drop just for one quarter, right? Which is no big deal, right? Companies go through good quarters and, and bad quarters. Uh, but take a look, right? Their operating cash flow, again, only dropped for one quarter, right? So if you look at the longer term, they are doing really, really well. So again, what's the reason for this recent quarterly decline in revenue and profits? Well, first of all, if you look at their gaming segment, the only reason it declined was because the Chinese government 
stop approving their games in the short term. So they can't release new games and that's why the revenue drop. Bust the government. Right, but anyway, the good news is the government is starting to approve games again. So that's going to rebound very strongly. So again, overall, their online gaming revenue dropped by 1%. On the domestic front, which is the China uh, market, their game revenue decreased 1% because of fewer games being released during the period. And also China had a new regulation stopping children from playing games. Bastards, right? So all that contributed a short-term drop in their gaming revenue. Uh, international gaming revenue dropped by 1% because of the high base effect. Because last year's results were so good because of the COVID lockdown and now people are going out, they play a bit less games. So that's causing that slight drop in the international uh, game revenue. But overall, the international game revenue is still growing on a year-to-year -year basis, right? In terms of their fintech and business services, which are their cloud business and their other business services, uh, the weakness was due to the resurgence of COVID and their, again, their lockdowns, right? But the good news is that commercial payment activities have resumed to high teens for second half of the year, expected to grow double digit in, sorry, is expected to grow double digit in the second half of 2022, and in fact has resumed to high teens growth um, on a year to year basis by June, right? Since June, right? Now again, the main drop for Tencent is their online advertising because of weakness, because of soft demand from advertisers in the internet, education and finance sectors because of all these slowdowns, right? So that will rebound. Now, in addition, Tencent is beginning to roll out video accounts in feed advertising in July, which should offer long-term growth potential for ads. So I've got no doubt that their revenue and profits will re-accelerate very, very easily. So why do I continue to hold Tencent, even though the stock price is down like 40, 50%? Because the underlying business is still intact, solid company, and the reasons I bought it, my investment thesis is still intact. It's still a company of a wide economic moat that has little or no competition that dominates in China. And again, their future growth is going to come from the monetization, the, the additional monetization of their WeChat ecosystem, of which again, they have got 1.27 billion monthly users that makes up 90% of China's population. And their long-term growth potential will also be enhanced by them ramping up monetization of their video accounts and mini programs. So do I want to continue to own a company that has locked 90% of the China's population mindshare into their account, where people, 90% of Chinese are going, you know, WeChat, 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 QQQQ, they're locked into Tencent, of course, all right? The second thing is I invested in Tencent because they are the leading games uh, developer in the world and in China. And is that thesis still intact? Yes, right? And Tencent has the capability to consistently launch blockbuster games all over the world and in China. And higher game growth is expected in the second half of this year once they have, uh, the Chinese government has resumed approval of games. The third reason I invested, and this is a smaller reason, is because uh, Tencent Cloud is the second largest player in China's cloud service market. Number one is, of course, Alibaba. Number two is, of course, Tencent, right? So I want to own the two companies that dominate cloud computing in China. And we expect fintech revenue to grow at 19% CAGR in the next three years. So it's still a solid dominant company that has captured 90% market share in China uh, that is selling at half price that is still growing, still making money, selling at half price. If you look in terms of a PE ratio, their forward PE ratio is now at 23 times earnings, which is uh, at a very, very uh, historical low level. Their price to free cash flow is selling at 15.8 times earnings. So again, a great company selling at a huge discount. Why? Because of all the macro issues in China. So is this something that if you have not invested in it, should you invest in it? It depends on you. Like I said, if you think that China's macro problems are going to last forever, then don't invest in it. If you think there's no future in China, don't invest in it. But if you think that China will eventually resume its growth once it resolves a lot of the short-term headwinds and crisis and, and politics, then it could be a great opportunity to buy great companies at, at half price. Okay, so this is part one of the video. Uh, in part two of the video, I'll talk about everyone's favorite stock, Alibaba.
And I'll also talk more in detail about what I think about some of the macroeconomic and political issues that are driving this bear market. So I'll see you guys in the next part of this video. But in the meantime, again, do subscribe to get the alert once a new video is up and be safe and may the markets be with you. If you want to catch my latest videos, click on the subscribe button right now. Click on the bell so you get instant notifications once I upload my latest video. If you want to check out my online courses, go to piranaprofits.com. We're going to learn how to invest and how to trade the financial markets and create an income from all around the world. If you want to join my live Wealth Academy program, go on to wealthacademyglobal.com and find out more about how you can learn investing and trading live online. This is Adam Koo and may the markets be with you.